Let's take a look at some information and charts on Ripple for Brave New Coin. I can't talk about Ripple without talking about the pending SEC fine investigation, whatever you want to call it. The reason it's important to know about this is because it's largely going to impact price depending on the resolution or conclusion of whatever happens with this. Unfortunately, you should prob probably be rooting for Ripple in this case because if Ripple loses, the SEC is probably going to go after many, many, many other projects, and it's just going to be very messy from a regulatory side of things. And if they win or lose, that's going to impact price. It's going to impact listings. It's going to impact inclusions in U.S. indices, exposure. The list goes down the line. So this is going to have a massive impact on price for sure. I don't know if they're, they're going to eventually come to a conclusion by this year or next year. Who knows? So for me, Ripple's always been a DLT more than a blockchain, decentralized ledger technology, sort of corporate speak for uh, let's hitch our bandwagon onto this blockchain thing. The Ripple net stuff, how Ripple works, Stellar is very similar. Uh, all that stuff is more like interbanking ledger type of stuff than necessarily blockchain for blockchain's sake or anything like that. It's certainly decentralized to a lesser degree, in my opinion, depending on how you categorize decentralization. You know, you can look at what Ripple's done with the supply. Uh, they created the entire supply out of nothing. They put it into escrow. They continue to hold a significant amount of Ripple. They have brand confusion. They control a significant amount of the nodes. They say that if they disappear as a company, that Ripple will still exist. I don't necessarily think that's the case personally, but they're uh, fine to try to argue that point. The whole thing here with the escrow is the main beneficiaries of the selling of Ripple are not the good folks at uh, large who are holding Ripple. It's Ripple, a company that benefits from the sales of Ripple in escrow. And how the escrow works is a million comes out of escrow every month in Ripple. And if it doesn't sell, it goes back into the escrow. So it's not just mindlessly dumped onto the market like Link, but again, Ripple, the company benefits from all those sales. And we can look at those sales over time um, and when those sales, uh, programmatic sales is what they used to call it, stopped or slowed down. Previously, it was programmatic sales plus OTC sales. Uh, now the OTC sales per quarter are actually matching or exceeding most of the previous programmatic sales plus OTC sales. So they're still making 150 million a quarter or, you know, the past two quarters, let's say 2021, they've made a significant amount of value just selling tokens, OTC, which that's fine. What do I care? But if they're calling this distributed and decentralized, it is not. They are benefiting solely from the sales here. Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO, has even said that Ripple, the company, would not be profitable if not for these sales each quarter. So we can look at the nodes in the network, uh, which are pretty, pretty decently geographically distributed. Now, I don't know how many of these have a full node or have all the history or, or have uptime that's reasonable. You know, I don't know that information. You'd have to go through that for each chain. Uh, but ideally, you want nodes with 100% of time owned by many different varieties of people. Nobody cares about any of this stuff until there's an issue, right? When there's an issue, people care about governance. People care about decentralization. Until then, nobody cares. So it is what it is. But um, another thing I like to watch is the nodes. If there's an upgrade in the network and let's say 60% of the nodes upgrade a couple did you know, a couple hours before, after the upgrade, that's usually indicative of cloud nodes or one entity controlling most of those nodes. We see that on ETH as well. So this isn't just a Ripple issue. Uh, the current version is 1.7.3. And you'd have to go through all these nodes and say, okay, which one's owned by Ripple, which one's subsidized by Ripple. Take that as a percentage and then that will help you figure out how decentralized uh, this really is. They also have validators that may or may not get paid by Ripple, may or may not be Ripple themselves. Anything Ripple dot anything is probably uh, a good bet that it's Ripple, the company, you know, incentivizing that in some way, shape, or form, which isn't a bad thing, but it plays a role in determining whether or not uh, this thing is decentralized, right? If those incentives dry up, will they continue to host a node, basically? The likely answer to that is probably no. We can look at some on-chain stats for Ripple, Transaction stats over the years since 2017 have basically been flat. They're certainly up over the past few weeks, but transaction counts 
on chain have done nothing over the past four years. Transaction values in the fill here essentially just flat as well, up a little bit in uh, 2021 along with price, but nothing too wild there. Um, something that I was surprised to see, but I don't exactly know why, but active addresses are, I think, at all time highs here. Yeah, mega, mega, mega all time highs here. So as bearish as I am on Ripple being a thing ever, um, active addresses are rising for some reason. I don't know if there's a DEX in the background. I don't know if they're just running transactions somewhere. I have no idea. But uh, when you look at transaction counts, they're up mildly. So I don't really know what's going on here. I tried like combing their blog post. I didn't see anything about it either. Um, NVT is basically at all time lows and just ranging, which is also more bullish than bearish. NVT is an inverse metric of economic utility relative to price. So you want to see that dropping and staying low. So again, as much as I'm not wanting to be bullish on Ripple, it does look pretty decent uh, from that perspective with the on-chain metrics. If we look at NVRV, which is another measure of market cap versus on-chain activity, uh, for most coins, they top out at a 2x multiple, meaning the market cap is two times greater than on-chain activity. That's typically the top. Ripple has reached uh, 3x in 2018. Most recently, it reached uh, 2.6x in April this year. Currently, it is at 1.6. So it's got some upside left. But if, let's say, uh, Ripple takes off from here in price, I would definitely watch MVRV as it approaches 2, as it approaches 2.5. If it gets to 3, that is definitely an overbought signal. So anything above 2, I would consider significantly overbought and at risk for a pullback at that point in time. And the further it gets from 2, the further the likelihood that uh, that's the top is closer rather than farther away. Last month, uh, they talked about an NFT creator fund. I haven't heard too much about this. Uh, I don't think there's a problem with this. Is it going to matter for the token? I don't know. You know, every chain should try to do what people want the chain to do, what people are finding fun and speculative and whatever. So it kind of is what it is. Uh, I don't think it'll go anywhere at the end of the day, but uh, good for Ripple for sp spending some of those hard-earned OTC sales on a creator fund. Looking at Ripple, Payment protocol, Google Trends worldwide, past five years, uh, flat and down, which is what you'd expect for something that's just price-wise kind of flat and down. Um, as price takes off, if it does, or if there's some SEC announcement or whatever, if there's something going on, news-wise, you're going to see that here. Price-wise, you're going to see that here. Plenty of upside. Um, if Ripple hits five bucks, 10 bucks, I don't know, right? Some crazy target. And Google Trends are maxed out new all-time highs. That's a good signal that all the new money that wants to get in is in, right? Everyone's super hyped. Everyone's euphoric. People are searching on Ripple price every day. You know, that's the kind of thing you saw in um, 2017, 2018. And if we look up, I forget which one of these is um, messed up, but one of the Dogecoin. Okay, so this is a perfect, perfect example. Dogecoin worldwide past five years, you see the same thing, right? All-time highs in price correlate pretty well with uh, all-time highs and Google, Google Trends. Currently, Doge is down here. I bet if we look up Shiba uh, coin, it might show up here. Yeah. So <laughs> now, you know, it's pushing all-time highs uh, with price, right? But you don't necessarily know where the all-time high in Google Trends is, but this gives you a good idea that uh, the top is, is closer rather than farther away. Certainly. Flipping here's the technicals. This is the two-year MA down here in the green and 5x that in the red up here. Generally, this is an oscillator. Uh, buy zone in the green, red zone is the sell. We recently just tapped that red zone in um, April, May. So it gave you a great selling opportunity up here if you had been buying and holding in uh, the green area. But currently it's below the midline. It's not in the buy zone, not in the sell zone. It doesn't tell me much of anything. It is at a dollar parity, which should act as uh, support to some degree, um, but this doesn't look like a strong buy or sell in either direction. A sell would be anything above 250, a buy would be anything below 55 cents. But as it sits here, this metric doesn't help you too much. Look at the three day cloud, also doesn't help you too much. You can see from 2018 to 2021, right? It was below the cloud, below the cloud, below the cloud, then it's been above the cloud, currently neutral. So more bullish than bearish, but doesn't give you a strong entry here. The reason I have to zoom way out on the three days is because it's been super volatile. 
since January, uh, since December, really, partly because of that SEC announcement. This was the candle the SEC announcement here. And then it kind of followed with DeFi and it's been up and down with DeFi and whatever else. But one thing to watch would be the three day cloud, because if this starts to flip bullish, then it probably goes for another leg towards the end of the year. And on the weekly 5200, it looks okay, right? It doesn't look bearish, doesn't look toppy per se, doesn't look at risk of anything. Volume's way down, RSI is sort of resetting. VPVR doesn't really help you much because there isn't really any supports until 50 cents at this point. The 200 day or 200 week <laughs> moving average is at 50 cents. And I think the biggest scare here is uh, very similar to 2017 to 2019, where you had this macro, just massive head and shoulders here, multi-shouldered, multi-headed monstrosity. You're seeing glimpses of that here, a diagonal head and shoulders uh, on a descending volume. So I'm not bullish on this by any means, uh, but at the same time, it doesn't look like it's going to necessarily mega roll over. But if it does, I like 50 cents as a buy that would also sort of match the uh, two year MA multiplier down there at 55 cents and uh, upside, you know, you, you could <laughs> as much as I'm always bearish on ripple in general, but one thing you could do is measure the fib from high to low here. You'd probably get a $5 plus target. Uh, so that is a five X from here. You can also look at the MA multiplier. Currently it's telling you to sell anything above three bucks. So on the USD pair, it's not really trending. It's not really, for me, it's not really, tell me much of anything on the BTC pair. It's been sideways since 2019. <laughs> this is just definitely a giant avoid for me. Um, volume has been declining since January, RSI declining since January. It's kind of stuck in this range, 500 sats to 3k sats. Um, uh, until it's above or below that range, it's a, just an ignore for me. I don't, I don't like trading ranges personally, but if you do, obviously, you know, you buy the lows, sell the highs, uh, anything above 3k sats, it's probably good for bullish continuation, but it is uh, a long ways away from that at the current point in time. And XRP ETH is basically at all time lows with either a descending triangle, head and shoulder, you know, something, whatever this is, is not bullish. Um, it's on its last volume support. Volume is down to nothing. RSI not yet bull diving. So uh, I don't like this as a buy. It doesn't look bad enough to buy. It looks like it's ready for some spike down to much lower lows. So really the big the biggest thing affecting price here is going to be that SEC announcement if it comes, when it comes. Other than that, uh, the USD and BTC pairs and ETH pairs just don't look like a buy to me at the current price. Last, I'll just mention the ETH BTC fund and DeFi portfolio. I trade for Techme Capital and Enzyme.finance, a non-custodial portfolio management tool where you can send ETH or USDC or just watch what I'm doing. You can see everything, including AUM performance allocation. Volts I'm in on Yearn, Comp, and Ave, as well as the trades and the trades tab down below. That's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.